Hi everyone, this is Andy, and this is the next video in my series on Autogen. So the previous videos in this series have centered around beta preview versions of Autogen. Those preview versions were actually released as version 2.0 last week, and they contain some pretty interesting things that I'm going to be talking about in upcoming videos. In this video, I'm going to talk briefly about the new Teachable Agent, and I'm going to show you how you can use it in your own projects. Teachable Agent is pretty interesting because, at least to my mind, this is pretty reminiscent of the way that MemGPT works. It's, it's an agent that you can give information to, you can end your chat session, and the next time that you bring it back up, it's going to remember things that you told it before. So it's pretty useful. It's pretty handy. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can use that in a project. The first step that I've taken in previous videos is to create a new Conda environment for our project. This time, I already have that environment created. So I'm going to show you the steps that I take to clean this environment up so that we can start fresh. I don't think that this is really necessary, but because this is a new version of Autogen, I'm going to start clean just to be safe. So the first thing that I'm going to do is say, Conda, deactivate. Now you can see my Autogen YT Conda environment is no longer active. And I'm going to get rid of that by saying Conda remove dash dash name Autogen underscore YT dash dash all. It's going to ask me if I want to remove it. I'm going to say yes. And what this is going to do is essentially delete this environment from your list of environments, and it's going to clean up all the packages that got installed in it. Now that that's done and we don't have our environment anymore, I'm going to go ahead and recreate it. So just as in the past, conda create, we're going to give it a version of Python 3.11.3 will still work here. So I'm going to install that. It's going to ask me if I would like to proceed. I'm going to say yes. Now that the new environment is installed, I'm going to go ahead and activate it. And the next thing that I'm going to do is, as with previous videos, I would like to know where Python is installed in this environment. So I'm going to say which Python 3, and it's going to tell me exactly where Python is installed. So I'm going to use that version of Python specifically, and I'm going to say pip install pyautogen equals equals 0.2.0. That is the new version of autogen that was released last week. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to let this go ahead and install. All right, now that that's done, I am going to go and create a new file. I'm going to call it OAI underscore config underscore list. As with previous videos, I'm going to take my API key and I'm going to put it in this file. And as with previous videos, I am going to revoke this key before publishing this video. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file for our project. I'm going to call it teachable.py. Now, one thing to notice before we go any farther is my Autogen YT Conda environment is currently active in the terminal. But if you look at the lower right-hand corner of the screen, this is not active in Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to click here, and I don't see Autogen YT in my list of environments. So I'm going to hit this refresh button, and there it is. It just popped up right at the bottom of the list. So I'm going to select that. And now Visual Studio Code is also aware of the environment that we've created for this project. Now, as with previous videos, I have some handy code ready to go. I'm going to paste that in here and I'm going to save. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and try and run this right off the bat and see what happens.
And just like that, we get an error. No module named chroma DB. So the teachable agent depends on a module that we do not have installed. So I am going to go ahead and install it right now. I'm going to use our same version of Python that is installed within our current environment. Pip install chroma DB. I'm going to hit enter and let that run. And this is going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to cut to when it is finished. And it looks like we're finished. So I am going to go ahead and run this code again and just make sure that worked. So I'm going to hit the run button. And here we are. You can see right away, the agent says loading previous memory, if any, from disk. And the teachable agent says to the user, greetings, I am a teachable user assistant. What's on your mind today? So I'm going to tell it, hello, I'm Andy, and I like tea and coffee. Hit enter. And the teachable agent says, hello, Andy, that's wonderful to hear. Both tea and coffee are popular beverages, so on and so forth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say exit. I'm going to leave this conversation. And you can see that right away it says reviewing chat for teachings to remember. And then it says saving memory to disk. And it's giving a location where it is going to save information about the chat that we just had. Now to demonstrate that, I'm going to run this code again. And it says, just like last time, loading previous memory, if any, from disk. And it says, greetings, I am a teachable user assistant. What is on your mind today? So what I'm going to say this time is, could you tell me my name and something about myself? Hit enter. Now, we get a couple of warnings from some of the internal things that the teachable agent is doing. And once it is done thinking, it says, hello, Andy. While I don't have the capability to remember personal conversations or use your defaults, I can certainly recall any general teachings from prior chats. Based on the clues you've given, it seems you may have told me before that you enjoy both tea and coffee. So it remembered my name and it remembered that I told it that I like tea and coffee. So let's look at the code and see what it takes to actually get this working. I'm going to resize these windows, these panels. Now let's take a quick look at this code. So you can see here right away, we are importing autogen agent chat contrib teachable agent, importing teachable agent. Just like last time, we are making a config list. And just like last time, we are setting up an LLM config. Now, for our actual teachable agent itself, we are making a new teachable agent object and we're giving it a name, teachable agent. We're giving it an LLM config just like last time, but now we are giving it a teach config object. The first thing that we're going to pass in here is a verbosity. You can see up here that it says you should pass in zero for basic info, one for memory operations, two for analyzer messages, three for memo lists. The second thing is we're going to pass in a recall threshold. Up here, you can see this is set to 1.5 and it says higher numbers allow more, but less relevant memos to be recalled. So to me, this seems pretty straightforward. If you were to make this number higher and higher, it would start remembering more things that you've talked about before in greater detail, but those things might not necessarily be relevant to what you're asking it or talking about right now. For verbosity, I have not done a lot of experimentation with this parameter, and that might be a good subject for another video. Let me know if you would like me to do that. The next thing that you see, path to db dir, uh, this is going to be a temp folder where you want it to store 
information that it is remembering about your conversations. You can see up here in the Explorer, I have that temp directory here because we've already had a conversation with this teachable agent. And the last parameter here is reset DB false. So this is where if you're starting a new chat and you want it to forget everything that it's learned, you can set this to true. Otherwise, set it to false, and it's going to remember information that you've talked about in previous conversations. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our user proxy agent, and then we are going to have the teachable agent initiate the chat with that user proxy agent. Once this is done, after you've exited the conversation, that's when it's going to run this line of code here. And this is really the important one, teachableagent.learn from user feedback. This is a function that's built into the teachable agent, and this is what allows it to parse the conversation history of what you just talked about, identify important things from it, and store it to its own database. Now, when it's done doing that, it's going to run teachableagent.closedb, and that's going to close the database connection and exit gracefully out of the program. So there you have it. That's how you can use the Teachable Agent in your own projects. It's fairly simple. Um, if you followed the previous videos, all of this should look pretty familiar by now. As usual, I will put the gist for this code in the description. Have fun with this one. Let me know if you come up with anything cool, and I will talk to you next time.